Thank you so much for being with us today. Sometimes ideas find authors, and ideas through authors find books. The idea of employees first, customers second found me as an author and 60,000 other colleagues of mine spread across 60, 26 countries as an author. And the idea got translated in a book, which is with you today. There are times when ideas are so powerful that they, found, they find their way of being expressed. The idea of employees first, customer second is simple. It can actually be summarized in four questions. Question number one is, what is the true business an organization is in? And the answer is to create differentiated value for your customers so that you can outgrow your competitor. So it's a competitive differentiation strategy. The second is, if that's, if that's what the true deliverable of the company is, then where does this value really get created? And the answer to that question is in the interface of the employees and the customer. Let's call that the value zone. And then the third question is, then who creates this value? And the answer is the employees who are in the interface of the customers and the employees. They are the people who create the value. And hence the fourth obvious question is, then hence what should the business of management be? And the answer to that is quite obvious, to be in the business of encouraging enthusing, enabling the employees to create the differentiated value which will make the organization grow. Thus the idea of employees first, customer second looks quite simple. There's one other reason why this, why this idea is, is very relevant for the moments of today and we were talking about the generation Y constitutes 50% of the global population today, 50% of the world population is less than 25 years old. This generation view to life is different than our generation, and actually that changes every 10 years. This generation believes in collaboration. This generation believes in creation of value in a different way than we do. This generation believes in collaborating in multiple dimensions rather than unidimensional of interest. When this generation is coming into our organizations, political systems, teams, which are hierarchical, which are suffocating, there is no way the generation would be able to produce the solutions to the problems we as a world face, we as a team face, or we as an organization face. And therefore, if there is something which we have to do, we have to destroy our organization structures, our thinking of the past, and recreate organization and make them relevant for future young, young, young generation leaders who are going to try and solve some of the problems we face. There is a third dimension to this idea, which is that today most of us, whether we are political leaders or team leaders or organization management, are standing on a ledge of a building which is on fire. Why is the building on fire? Because the trust between us and our employees or our team members and our constituents is at its lowest. And that is largely because the way we behave during recession or the way we behaved during various parts of our... And that has got to do with our leadership style. Lack of, lack of trust gets created out of lack of transparency. If our future growth out of recession and creation of jobs lies in the hands of the employees who will create the innovation and the growth, then there has to be something done about this problem now, right now. And that is the reason this idea, the time for this idea, has come now. And one last 
thought on this, this part of the problem we're facing today. Over generations, we have seen organization structures evolve. We started with an army, which was the first organization structure we saw to try and build control over organizations. The commanders of those armies were in the business of enthusing, enabling, and ensuring that their armies fight with a lot of passion compared to any other army. And therefore you saw historically a lot of small companies, small armies, overpowered large armies because of the passion they demonstrated. But one thing was very clear in the commander's mind, that means they had one sword and his soldiers had 50,000 swords. And therefore he was not in the business of fighting, he was in the business of enthusing, encouraging, enabling and motivating his troops to fight. When we adopted that organization structure and brought them into the organization, unfortunately the commander kept the entrapment and the spotlight of leadership on him, but forgot that the responsibility and the leadership was in enthusing, encouraging, enabling his troops to fight with a lot more passion than anybody else. And therefore they created this alternate environments called HR so that it became HR's responsibility to motivate the troops and it became my responsibility to enjoy the gains from being a leader. And therefore the definition of leader started changing. And slowly the disease set in into our teams, into our political systems, into our organization. This idea and this book is an experimental journey to try and challenge what I believe is impacting all of us in all walks of life. How come we believe in democratization of our countries and making leaders accountable, but we do run our organizations in very autocratic styles? In 2005, 30,000 employees, now 60,000 employees, started a journey of asking these questions. We learned our lessons from greats of Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, and Martin Luther King who taught us that if you want to ask a question and transform an organization, you can do it in three simple steps. Step one is to ask and look at the mirror and feel extremely uncomfortable with where you are, which I hope I'm doing with you today. That today is not acceptable. Today is not why I was born to be. Today is not where I will end my day to be. Unhappiness with today. And they created the fact that British Raj was not an acceptable position for India. That's what Mahatma Gandhi created in our minds. The second step is he created a vision for tomorrow. Our political leaders created a vision for tomorrow, which was very compelling, very exciting. We can be free. So that there was a huge urge amongst ourselves to try and break away from where we are today and be free. And the third step is they started small Catholic actions like Dandi March or the RTI Act to move away from here to there. Three simple steps to create a revolution. This book is a journey which 30,000 employees started in 2005, spreads over five years, and the results are spectacular. A 3.6 times growth in five years, a 3.4 times growth in EBITDA, highest customer satisfaction in our history, lowest attrition, fastest growth, and all thought leaders as Vinay was saying, we are taught at the Harvard Business case, Fortune calls us the most modern management and our customers love us. So the results of employees first, customer second, in commercial sense, is there for everybody to see. In the passion in the eyes of employees, us being the number one in employee satisfaction, is there for everybody to see. But I think the more important lesson is this experiment has just begun. And if we can, through this book, influence more hearts and minds to try and walk a different experimental journey, different to ours, if our idea of employees first, customers second can generate a new idea in your mind and the reader's mind, I think we will be a better place to live, and I think we all deserve a better place to live. Thank you so much.